Hello there. Welcome back to Jedi Knights. This is episode 15. I'm your moderator, Christian Buckley, joined by Mike Connors. Thanks for having me once again. It's always a pleasure. <laughs> I think we say the same thing every time. We do. I, I wish I had a stronger open, but that's our open. Yeah, I remember one time we just like couldn't do the opening. <laughs> it took us like five tries. Yeah. So, so that's something. <laughs> All right. <laughs> We've moved past it. We have. Uh, this is normally the part where I introduce Pat Maroney. He's off on assignment, so filling him, filling in for him is Noah Kantorovich watching over the board. Thank you. You're welcome. She said thanks. Or you're welcome. Whatever. Today we're talking about Mandalorian. Episode six? The, the Prisoner. The Prisoner is the name of the episode. Yep. Uh, I like Mandalorian reviews because they're super chill. Yeah, I mean, I think it's cool because we're just, like, experiencing it at the same time, essentially. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, there's nothing, no years of, of of discussion already behind them, like the, some of these <laughs> Star Wars movies. Yeah, it's like two days worth yeah. of discussion. So, you know, they're really first impressions, but they're good. Yeah, and it's, I'm glad that we have this sort of outlet for Star Wars with Mandalorian because... Yeah. I wasn't super big into Game of Thrones or like any of these big shows or so, since Breaking Bad, but having a weekly thing, I still got to watch Watchmen, but like having a weekly thing rather than all at once, I'm glad they took that approach. I, I do think that having it like on a weekly schedule like this mm -hmm. has its own merits. Yeah. It lets you savor it a little bit more. For sure. Um, You know, Netflix just like putting all 10 episodes out as great as that is in the moment. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you binge watch something and you don't really remember. Yeah. Uh, Witcher is coming out this Friday. Yeah, is that? I don't know what they're doing with that. I heard they were doing episodic, then I heard it was all at once. Yeah. I hope it's episodic because with the case of The Mandalorian, specifically the past few episodes, yeah. I think if this was bingeable, then it would be receiving much more negative reviews. Why? Because it would just be too much. This is Those are filler or something like that. Yeah, not necessarily even filler, just like, oh, this is it this week, you mm -hmm. know? But yeah. like, I like that because every week we're looking into what's going on with this story and these characters more accurately than overarching story. Yeah. Because this episode, one of the longer ones so far. I think so. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. like 38 minutes, right? Uh-huh. The Prisoner, it's a heist. It is a heist. And it turns <laughs> sour. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't know if I talked to you about this on the show. I think I did when we were talking about Rogue One. If you listen to Excelsior, you would know when we talked about Ant-Man, I love a good heist movie. Yeah. So when I got like four minutes into this episode, Bill Burr was introduced and then he was going over like, this is the team. This is the plan. I was in. People knew that Bill Burr was in this show before this episode. I had no idea. Yeah, he was in one of the trailers. Oh, oh, was he? Yeah, he popped around. It was the shot where he popped around the corner and he had like the turret on his shoulder and it was like pop, pop, pop. Okay. Yeah. Also, is the actress who played Tonks in this one too? Is she the Twilight? Oh, okay. I See, I think that's who it is. Is that a, Is that who that is? Probably, because right. I, I knew I recognized her somewhere. Uh, Sheehan is her name? I don't. In, in Oh, in this movie? Yeah, in, uh, the, in the episode. In the, in the Mandalorian, yeah. Yeah. So I, I knew she was from somewhere, and I was like, I'll look for credits. But then I was in a rush after, so I forgot to check. But it's definitely her. It's got to be. Yeah. Uh, she was one of the things in the episode that didn't work for me super well. Yeah, I didn't really understand her relationship with her brother. It seemed a little weird to me. Yeah, I mean, I, they're criminals, so, like, the only one I care about is myself, I guess. Yeah. But I, I kind of thought she was overacting. I think that that's kind of just the way that that actress does things. Yeah. Like, I, it works with Tonks, you know, because that's Harry Potter and that's magic, you know? Like, po spawning out a beak to say if a couple things. That's true, yeah. Works more than, like, licking knives or whatever she was doing. I don't know. I, I, I personally thought it worked. Yeah, I think she, I thought she fit in with the crew. But, like, yeah, yeah. it was The Shining. Maybe tone it down a peg <laughs> right. for me. Who was the guy, like, who played the person? Berg? Uh, no, not Berg. The guy who owned the spaceship. That they oh, w I don't know what else he's from. I know he's from something else. Yeah. But I think he was Detective Bullock in Batman Begins. All right. He was the corrupt cop. I don't remember. That. Okay. He's the one that he hung upside down. He's like, swear to me. No. And he's eating it's falafel. Coming. It's not coming to me. And there's that one shot where you see like a little bit of falafel left on his lip. It's gross. I'm not. <laughs> nope. I you think can, it's, You can keep I, describing it, Christian. I'm not going to be able to remember it. So, so I think it's him. All right. But Berg, Clancy Brown. Yep. Mr. Krabs himself. Yep. That was cool. Mr. Krabs is now canon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, red. Yeah, he's red. I thought he died at that one point. Claw. 
was. I thought they all died. No, when the door happened, he got like stuck in the door. And he was oh, like he lifting it up. No, because they show up at the end. At the end, they're in I prison. Didn't he was there. Yeah, they're, he's laying down in a cell. Yeah. His horns are chipped. I thought he died too. Yeah, because I was like, when the second door closed, I was like, "That's brutal." I thought he was the only one to have actually died. died. That's what I thought too. Yeah. Until we see the little stinger at the end. Okay, so thing I want to pose to you this is kind of more broad, mm-hmm. but this is like the third episode in the row that we've gotten that's just like side quest. Yeah. How are you feeling about that? I like it because I think it's I, I think it's not what people wanted out of the show as far as like actually, you know what? I feel like it probably is what people wanted out of the show, but once they threw the wrench of baby Yoda in, people had different expectations. Yeah, I thought it would yeah. Cause before going into Baby Yoda, I thought it was gonna be like, What's the bounty this week? Mm-hmm. You know? And that's kind of what it has been, except you have that little carrot on the stick of Baby Yoda. Right. That that kind of is the through line throughout the entire thing. Mm-hmm. At this point, I'm pretty sure the Mandalorian is just escaping from other bounty hunters. Yeah. But I really was expecting this show to have more, like, narrative to it, I guess. One, one like, overarching, like, fluid one. We haven't even seen Werner Herzog's character yeah. yet. There's only two episodes left, is all I'm saying. And yeah. It feels like not a lot has happened since the third episode yeah there hasn't been really uh there are those comments we talked about about Favreau saying season two is the baby yoda season okay uh but for this season specifically i think fleshing out the underworld is doing a great job at that because i feel like as much as everybody loves java's palace you know and seeing all the weird kinds of creatures in there i feel like the underground of star wars still hasn't been fleshed out enough in canon at least modern canon so you think this is just world building so far yeah and i'm okay with that okay. because i like mando i like seeing him in these situations uh i i was wondering if bill burr was gonna work for me in this episode i thought he worked yeah I, i'm kind of lukewarm on him he worked for me at the beginning but then i kind of fell off of him. i mean he kind of did the same thing you know he didn't really yeah. go anywhere with his character no they set him up to be like oh he's this hot shot and then just gets locked away at the end. Yeah. Um, I saw somebody complaining online. It's like, since when is there Boston accents in the Star Wars? It's like, since <laughs> when is there like English accents? There's always yeah. accents in Star Wars. I know. That's what, that's what I thought when I saw it. I was like, oh, cool. Now the Massachusetts Boston accent. That's yeah. canon. Now. We get representation. Yeah. In it. I was like, I wonder what planet he's from. Yeah. <laughs> I want to see where he's from. Yeah, I want to see where he's from. It just looks like Cape Cod. Oh, my God. I'm trying to think. Okay. So, slight tangent. The the movie that takes place on the planet inspired by Boston. Which of the Boston boys is directing this? Um I It's don't not know. Adam Sandler. No, no, no. No. Cause it, unless it unless it is. <laughs> no, it's not. Yeah. Uh one of the Wahlbergs. You know what? Yeah. Because I don't think Ben Affleck would do Star Wars after doing Batman. No. Wait, the Wahlbergs, they direct, right? One of them sure does, I'm probably. Sure, I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> Mark Wahlberg owns a restaurant. What can he not do? Yeah. But yeah, I thought Bill Burr, as his like opposition to Mando in the sep, I liked it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He d- he served his purpose. It was fine. Mm-hmm. But as far as the heist goes in general, loved it. Yeah, it was cool. I I like the setting of of a uh, New Republic like prisoner transport. Yeah, that was cool. Yeah, that was very cool. I also like how the soldiers uh, or the pilot of that transport was wearing the same like Rebel soldier helmet. Mm-hmm. It's very cool. Yes, very very cool. I liked seeing that. I liked seeing uh, all the falling apart of the team yeah. slowly. There were a couple points where I thought that it like we were bouncing around too much and not much was happening. You know, of like here's the shot of Bill Burr, here's the shot of uh, Sheehan, here's the shot of uh, Berg, and then bouncing back to Bill Burr and then yeah. going through the cycle. But I liked the like you were like you said the setting, the color tones, uh, the emergency, red light having everything like that. The shot when Mando like pops up, yeah, closer and closer. I just yeah, it, I don't know. It was cool to like see Mando like s- like lurk through the shadows and stuff like that. I thought yeah. that they did some really interesting like visual things with mm-hmm. that, um, especially with like the flashing lights and all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it was it was creepy. I always like when that's done well. Yeah. You know, you could easily botch that, but I thought they handled it well. I think it was done really well. 
Uh, shout out also the uh, the X Wing pilots in this episode. <laughs> yeah, shout out Dave Filoni as an X Wing pilot. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, Deborah Chow was another one she directed. Was she? Yeah. Was that her? Yes. And then um, Rick Famuyiwa. Who directed this one? I'm yes. Sure. He did. As well as, I think he did episode three too. I don't know. I can double check that. Yeah, I'm not really sure. Um, but yeah, w- as far as where you stand about the show and its progression so far. Do you like this? Do you like this? Uh, I would say that I'm, it wasn't what I was expecting. It's kind of disappointing to me. I was expecting there to be a little bit more of a story through it. Mm -hmm. Um, And so the fact that it's just kind of like really episodic and each episode has its own like its own like three story act basically. Yeah, I I I like that in a way because it's it's like it's a sn- it's a neat little vin- vignette of like what's happening. But mm-hmm. I don't know. I kind of expected it to be different. Um, I also expected the episodes to be longer, which is <laughs> I'm still yeah. a little salty about that for whatever reason. This is all like in the under the guise of like I really I really do enjoy the Mandalorian. Me too. But I was disapp- I am disappointed about. Yeah, I cannot find what episode he did do, but I know he has done an episode so far. Yeah, he has. You're probably right with episode three. No, episode three was Deborah Chow. Oh, was it? Right, yeah. Okay. All right. But yeah, I, I like where this one fits in because y- you hit some of the Western tropes already, you know, like saving the town, right? Uh, the shootout. This episode, I liked the heist aspect of it a lot. Give me more heists in Star Wars. I would love more. Um, I just like the standoff at the end. <laughs> yeah. Or in the middle. Yeah. Yeah. I like good. that. Um, I just like the little cameos that are in these. Yeah. They're, they're fun. They're really yeah. fun. Like Bill Burr in a Star Wars, <laughs> uh, Star Wars TV show. Yeah. That's a get. <laughs> that is a get. <laughs> yeah. Um, and it's cool to see, like, I think at this point too, what we talked about with, uh, Cara Dune, like, I can't imagine any of these characters are popping back up in this season at least. Probably not in the season, no. Yeah, I I do think some some characters are going to though. Bill Burr is coming back. Bill Burr is coming back. Season two, he's back. Cara Dune definitely coming back. Yeah, he's gonna link up with her again. Mm-hmm. Um, you just know season two, Mando's gonna be in a tough spot, and then he's gonna be like being held at gunpoint in a room. Then Bill Burr walks in, he's like, "Well, well, well." Yeah. I don't, or and then Cara Dune comes out of and like nowhere, like Deus Ex Machina yeah. style. Yeah. <laughs> or uh, Quill. From, like, the Ugnaught. Or yeah. Whatever. More standoffs. Yeah, I got to see him. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, I liked this one. I know people are disappointed about, like, what you were saying, the progression of it all, but seeing a heist with the Mandalorian, that got me. Yeah, it was pretty cool. It had me captivated throughout the entire thing. Mm-hmm. Um, it's definitely one of my least favorite episodes. Oh, really? It's I one of my like, faves. I feel like I've been saying this for the last few <laughs> ones. Yeah. Um, I'm... I guess I'm just one of the ones, pe- one of the people who are disappointed. Yeah, and that's fair. I think dropping a force sensitive baby Yoda is asking for that kind of line of thought, you know? Yeah, I think it was just a lot at the beginning yeah. and then not much right now. Mm-hmm. I mean, it still has a chance to do better, and then that's just the course of the season. But um, yeah, I still like it. Yeah, me too. And they could easily also have known that the show is going to be a hit. And already planned to do a second season and then split up the story across two seasons, you know? It's possible. Because this is the first narrative-based, high-budget Disney Plus show. Yeah. So they probably did want to test the waters a little bit, but they were, like, taking a risk of deciding to split it into a second season. That's true. I mean, I at the end of the day, if they're going to make a second season, yeah. like, I'm going to watch it. Mm-hmm. Like, so they have, a, they have all the time in the world with me. Awesome. Uh, any final thoughts on this app? No, I think we covered it. Yeah. <laughs> I'll just reiterate once again. If you, if you're a creative director that's being approached by Lucasfilm and he needs some kind of story to do, make it a heist. Cause by God, it's incredible. More, we need more heist Star Wars stuff. Absolutely. Yeah. Rogue one, the parts of rogue one that actually did heist. Those are the parts I enjoyed. Yeah. But like this one was super tight. They got like some of those key betrayal moments right. They got like the best aspects of a heist. They got really good looking uh, cinematography in this episode. So I'm happy. All right, cool. Want to give it a score? Out of 10? Yeah.
Um, I'll give it like a seven. Okay. I think at the end of this, I'm going to have to re-score them all. I want to rank this at the end of this. We're going to for sure. Yeah. Because I, I think this is up there with episode four for me. Really? Okay. As, this might be my favorite. Episode four was phenomenal. Episode four, I love to death. This episode is super close. Okay. Because you know what? It also gave me shades of Firefly. I've never seen Firefly. Firefly is really good. Okay. <laughs> you got that crew. You got that ragtag group trying to pull a job. So I always love that. Um, uh, like Ocean's Eleven. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> love Ocean's Eleven. Um, I'll give it a nine. Wow. Okay. Cool. I was like teetering on an eight, five, or a nine. Yeah. But like, it's it's a good one for me. Lots of tense moments in this one. Yeah. And it's they nailed good. it. Nothing felt like it fell flat. Yeah. So. And it could have easily. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Uh, teases of the future, I guess, too, with uh, Zero, the droid, seeing the grief Karga. Yeah, but that droid's dead now, right? Yeah, so do you think they're just doing that to remind you that he's on the run? Probably, yeah. Yeah. Because you haven't had any much, like, very much um, interaction with any of that side of things since episode three. Mm-hmm. So. There's been no appearance of grief Karga. Do you think he's going to come back? At this point, I don't know. But the <laughs> end of episode five, they did tease some mysterious character. I think that's Giancarlo Esposito's character. Yes, I agree. And I think he, my guess is where we end off in the show for this season. It's going to involve him being an uh, associate of Werner Herzog's character. He takes Baby Yoda captive. Yeah, and then maybe <laughs> Grief shows up and it's like, I told you, man, no. <laughs> We we're gonna get you. <laughs> Scene. <laughs> That's a great impression. Thank you. Thank you. You ever? This is the last thing that we can sign off. Okay. Uh, did you watch Arrested Development? No. Okay, so there's an arc where one of the characters wants to be an actor, and then they find like a down on his luck Carl Weathers <laughs> to like teach them acting. Yeah. And there's a scene where he gets invited to a party, and you can like his character is like, this is when like post Predator, who is Carl Weathers, you know. And there's just one scene where he's like gnawing on a bone and he's like, Oh, you take this bone, you throw it in some water, you got a stew going. And every time I see him, I just think of that scene and it ruined it for me. Ruined the Mandalorian for you. <laughs> yeah. What a garbage show. <laughs> All right. Well, that's going to do it for this episode. Yep. Um, ideally, this is coming out the day we shoot it. I have to give that disclaimer every week. I, ideally, that's the operative word. Yeah. Yeah. Um, this week is the rise of Skywalker. So excited. It's finally here. It is. Uh, Wednesday. so much anticipation. Yes. Wednesday. Wednesday is when we are planning on releasing our predictions for the rise of Skywalker. We don't really, we haven't looked at spoilers or any sort of stuff like that. So they're going to be predictions made in fun, not going off of any quote unquote evidence. Um, Wednesday also this week is the new episode of Mandalorian. Yep. So I don't know how we're tackling that yet. Nope. Stay tuned. We'll figure it out. <laughs> At Jedi Knights on Twitter. But uh, if you've enjoyed this Mandalorian episode, if you've been watching it, you're on YouTube.com slash If you've been listening to it, you're on podcast services like Spotify, Apple Podcasts, whatever else you can listen to podcasts with. Um, we have Patreon. Patreon.com slash joyclicks is where you can go for early access to Big episodes of Jedi Knights. I have to make that like distinction the now too. Episodes. The Friday yeah. apps. Uh, because now we're bi- we're a bi-weekly podcast. Pretty much, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, Mike, if there is anything you would like to plug, uh, where you can, can people find you? You can follow me on Twitter at Mike P Connors. Very nice. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Chris N Buckley. And until the next time you hear us talking, this is the way. May the force be with you. See ya. General Kenobi! <laughs>